The I/O transfer can be initiated either by the processor or by the I/O device by asserting a DMA request signal to the DMA controller. Upon receiving a DMA request from an I/O device, the DMA controller will raise an interrupt signal to the processor in order to initiate the DMA transfer. The processor responds to this interrupt signal by programming the DMA controller or initiating the DMA controller with all the necessary information required by it to control the data transfer between the memory and the I/O device. And this information includes the starting address in the starting address register, the word count in the word count register, and the control information. The starting address, the starting address in the memory to which or from which the data words are to be transferred. Then the word count from that starting address total how many words are to be transferred between the peripheral. Then the control information whether the data are to be written to these memory locations or whether the data are to be read from that memory locations and written to the I/O means whether it is a read from I.O. operation or a write to I.O. operation. Having programmed the DMA controller, the CPU can continue with its work. By that time, the DMA controller communicates with the I.O. device and gets ready with the data to be transferred. Having the data ready, DMA controller will request the control over the bus from the processor by raising a bus request signal or a hold signal. We know that when an interrupt signal is received by the processor, while the processor is in the midst of some instruction cycle, then the processor should complete that instruction cycle before responding to that interrupt. But unlike interrupt here, when the whole signal or the bus request signal is received by the processor, while the processor is in the midst of some instruction cycle, then the processor need not complete that instruction cycle before responding to it. There are DMA breakpoints within the instruction cycle. Hence, the processor can respond back without much delay using a bus grand signal or a hold acknowledgement signal. A bus grand signal or a hold acknowledgement signal to the DMA controller shows that the processor has left the control over the bus and DMA controller is now the master of the bus. Having got the bus, DMA controller will now control the data transfer between the memory and the peripheral by placing the address in the start address register onto the address bus and by placing the control information onto the control bus. Now the data corresponding to this address will be transferred between the memory and the peripheral through the data bus. Suppose we need to read a block of 20 words from I.O. device 1 onto the memory location starting from 1000. Then the starting address register content is 1000. The word count register content is 20. The control information is read from I.O. 1. The DMA controller places the address 1000 onto the address bus. The control information read I.O. will be kept onto the control bus and then the data to be written onto this memory location from I.O. device 1 will be kept by the I.O. module onto the data bus and will be written to that location 1000. Having transferred one data word, the content of the starting address register will be incremented or decremented depending on the direction in which next word to be transferred. Suppose here the content is incremented showing that the next word is to be written onto the location 1001. Now one word is already transferred hence the word count register will be decremented showing that 19 more words are to be transferred. Again, DMA controller places this address onto the address bus, the control information onto the control bus, and the I.O. module keeps the data from I.O. device 1 onto the data bus and will be written onto the location 1001. 
Again, the address register content will be incremented and the word count register will be decremented and so on. Finally, when the entire block is transferred, the word count reaches zero. Hence, the DMA transfer is completed. Thus, the DMA controller informs the processor using an interrupt signal and by keeping the bus request signal or the whole signal low. So, upon receiving the interrupt, seeing a low bus request signal and the word count zero, the processor recognizes that the DMA transfer is completed. Hence, the processor takes the control back from the DMA controller. Take the bus control back from the DMA controller by keeping the bus grand signal low. So this mode of DMA transfer in which the DMA takes the control over the bus, transfer the whole block of data and after the completion give the bus control back to the CPU is called the burst mode of DMA transfer. During this entire duration of block transfer, CPU cannot use the bus but can continue with other tasks. Also, the CPU has to just hold off, no context switching, no saving the state information and hence a lot of overhead is avoided. The other option for burst mode DMA transfer is cycle stealing mode in which whenever the DMA controller gets control over the bus, it initiates the transfer of just one word, then keep the whole signal or the bus request signal low and keep the bus control back to CPU. Because sometimes the IO device may be very slow and hence the next word to be transferred may not be ready. So the CPU can now use the bus. When the next word is ready, DMA steals another cycle from the CPU. So here the system allows the DMA controller to use the bus to transfer one word. Then it should return control back to CPU and again get back the CPU for the transfer of another word and so on. These modes can be made more transparent by allowing the DMA to steal the bus cycles from the CPU only if the CPU is not actually using the system bus. This is called transparent DMA.